All right, so let's actually solve some problems with acceleration to show you how to do this. So if you get stuck, rewatch this. It's another example, okay? So let's talk about um, our first example, okay? What do we do first? Aha, remember our obvious guess, okay? Obvious thing to do is to take a deep breath. You can do this. You know how to do this. And let's read the problem and visualize what's going on. Okay. So, Grandma is driving you in her car at 30 miles per hour. You beg and plead for her to accelerate. She does. And over the next five seconds, the car reaches 40 miles an hour. What was the car's acceleration? Okay. So, if we remember our guess, okay, G-U-E-S-S-S-S, -S -S -S, okay? G was the given, so we need to underline the givens. Underline and list the givens. And we know that you have a velocity of 30 miles an hour. It's taken over a time of five seconds, and it reaches 40 miles an hour. That's weird. There's actually two velocities or two speeds right there. So, hmm... It's interesting. There's got to be a difference between them. Well, here's what it is. Okay, she started out going 30 miles an hour, so that would be her initial velocity. That should be an I. There we go. And this is her final velocity because, well, that's the velocity at the end of this little situation, at the end of this system that we're talking about here. Okay, now the next part is the unknowns, right? So we did our givens, now we need to circle and list the unknown. Here it is. We're looking for acceleration. Now I forgot to list these first, so here we go. Okay, so we know that the initial velocity is 30 miles per hour. Yes, you should be writing this down on every single problem. You should be writing the givens just like this. We know that the VF, or the final velocity, is 40 miles per hour. Okay. And we also know that the time it took to go from 30 to 40 is 5 seconds. Okay. Alright, so where do we go from here? Well, remember you got a E is for the equation, so you select the right equation. All right. We know that we're looking for acceleration, right? Okay. Oop, let me put that there. So we need to go back to our essential equation sheet. And we need to find the equation that has A on the one side, and then these variables, the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the time on the other side. So what you would wind up doing is looking at your essential equation, and you will find the equation A bar equals VF minus VI divided by t, okay? So, let's not forget that you can solve this conce conceptually because all you're doing when you're finding acceleration, remember acceleration is just how much the velocity changes over time. So you can kind of think already, you think you know you're gonna get the right answer because you went from 30 to 40, that's a 10 mile an hour change, and you divide that by five because it took you five seconds to change 10 meters per second. So you're thinking you'll probably get like 10 divided by two. Let's make sure, okay? So let's do the math, all right? So VF, the final velocity is 40. Ooh, that didn't work out. It's 40 miles per hour minus 30 miles per hour. Why? Because VF is 40, VI is 30, okay? So we subtract where we ended up, and sorry, we subtracted where we uh, started from where we ended up, and we divide that by the time, which is five seconds. Excuse my sniffling, please. All right, so 40 minus 30, everybody is, duh, 10. So it's 10 miles per hour per five seconds. And so now we do, we got to simplify this. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. And then the units, none of these units cancel out. They're all different. 
So what we wind up doing is we say your acceleration was two miles per hour per second. Okay? In other words, what this is telling you right here is that you went two miles per hour faster every second. And that makes sense. See this other S. We substituted, we solved, now we self-check. And so, ooh, how'd that happen? So we self-check and we think, okay, if you went two miles an hour faster every second, that would be like starting at 30 and then going to 32 one second later, then 34, then 36, then 38, and then 40. And that takes, let's see, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. That took five seconds. So there we go. This is the correct answer. We then show it off by boxing it. And that's how you find a simple acceleration. Now, this is if the units don't really work out. Okay. Let's try another example. Okay. All right, Jimmy Johnson is cruising with you in his car, and he's going uh, slow. He's going at 20 kilometers an hour. Okay. Oops, I forgot to breathe. We can do this. Now we're going to read and visualize, and I'm going to underline the givens as we go along. So 20 kilometers an hour, that's a given. Okay. You beg and plead for him to accelerate. I want to feel what NASCAR feels like. So he does. And over the next seven seconds, the car reaches 110 kilometers per hour. <coughs> Excuse me. What was the car's acceleration? Okay, so I'm getting good at this problem solving. So I actually already underlined the givens and um, circled the, give, the uh, unknown. So now I need to list them. Now, 20 kilometers an hour and 110 kilometers an hour. They're both velocities. So there's a difference between them. Which one was the first one and which one the last was the last one? Well, the first one, the initial velocity, you and Jimmy were going 20 kilometers per hour. Okay? And then at the end of this problem, it says you were going 110 kilometers per hour, right? And then the time that it took to do that, was seven seconds okay and it's looking for acceleration and so you do the same thing as before you look for your equation in your essential equation sheet and you find the one that says a bar equals v i sorry v f minus v i see you always gotta check otherwise you'll mess it up okay so v f minus v i over t and so you start doing the calculations. You substitute in. You went you went 110. Wow, this handwriting's not going so well today. Kilometers per hour. And you subtract what you started at, which is 20 kilometers per hour. So you took where you ended up, the VF minus the VI, and you divide that by how long it took you to do that, which is seven seconds. Now you got to simplify it a little bit. Okay. What's 110 minus 20? Well, that's 90. And the units stay up there. So 90 kilometers per hour divided by 7 seconds. So again, we do the same thing that we normally do to simplify. We do the units and the numbers separately. Now 90 divided by 7, I'm going to experiment here. Can I get my calculator on? Up. No, I can't get my calculator on. So I'll just give you the answer. It is 12.85. That's the number right here. 9 divided by 7 is 12.85. But what is that? Is that meters? Is that seconds? Is that bananas? I don't know. Well, we look here. What did we do? We did kilometers per hour divided by seconds. Do any of those cancel out? No. So what we're left with is kilometers per hour per second. So in other words, Jimmy Johnson was accelerating at a rate of 12.85 kilometers per hour per second. That means his speed was increasing by almost 13 kilometers an hour every second. So it would be like going 20, and then one second later you're going about 33, and then one second later, one second later you're going 46 kilometers an hour. So that's how fast the speed is increasing. Okay? And that winds up 
being our answer, so we show it off. One last example, okay? It's got two parts. The first part is you ride your bike at a speed of 13 meters per second. You see the ice cream truck ahead of you, and you speed up to 20 meters per second in only three seconds. What is your acceleration? All right, so let's talk about this. You have a speed of 13 meters per second. And then you speed up to 20 meters per second, and it only takes you three seconds. So we know that our initial velocity let's get that there, equals 13 meters per second. That's how fast you were going at first. Okay? Then you see the ice cream truck, and you speed up. And it says you reach 20 meters per second. Okay, great. How long did it take you to do that? Well, that's in the problem. Our time is 3 seconds and it's asking for the acceleration so we write a equals question mark okay. so let's do the math well we use our acceleration equation so we do a bar equals vf minus vi divided by t okay. all right so the final velocity was 20 meters per second the initial was 13 if you do it in your head already, you know that's an increase of 7. Okay? But then we divide that by the time, which is 3 seconds. Okay? So 20 minus 13, I said, is 7. So we have 7 meters per second over 3 seconds. Now let's simplify that. Okay? So 7 divided by 3 is just 2.33. You don't need the repeating, just round it. And then, ooh, what do we do here? Hmm. Some of you might be tempted to cancel out the S's. That doesn't work here. Why? Because what we have is we have meters divided by seconds divided by seconds. And that's just like saying seconds over one. Okay? Follow me here. If the S was up here with the M, you could, but it's not. So we have meters divided by seconds divided by seconds. Now, if you know your math, which I hope you do, okay, if you did something like 4 divided by 2 divided by 2, that's like saying 2 divided by 2, that actually equals 1. That's the same as doing 4 divided by 2 divided by 2 over 1, which is the same as doing... 4 divided by 2 times 1 over 2. And when you multiply across here, you get 4 divided by 4 equals 1. So this multiplying by 1 half okay, is the same as dividing by the inverse. Okay, So here, that's just like saying... This is the same as saying meters per second times 1 over seconds. And now, when you multiply across, meters times 1 is just meters. And then S times S, well, anything times itself is itself squared, so that would be S squared. And so, when we are using meters per second per second, we write the unit for acceleration as meters per second squared. And that's the correct answer. So in other words, when you were speeding up, your speed was increasing by about two and a third meters per second every second. That's what this is saying. 2.3 meters per second every second. And as scientists, we simplify that to meters per second squared. That only works when we're using meters per second, which we pretty much will be for the rest of the time, though there might be some other questions there. All right. Now, let's do the last part of this. Slightly different acceleration. Watch this. Whew. Ice cream truck stops. And then you slow down over the next six seconds and then stop at the truck to get a creamsicle. What is your acceleration? So think about this. You're already going 20 meters per second, and then you slow down over six seconds. What's your acceleration? Here we go. Now, there are some givens that are in the problem but weren't specifically stated, okay? 
Remember, we need to have our initial velocity, we need our final velocity, and we need our time. Now it did give us our time, very specifically, six seconds. But it didn't specifically say the initial velocity or the final velocity. But we know, based on this whole story, it says that you sped up to 20 meters per second. So that is going to be our initial velocity. Okay. So as the story goes, you went from 13 to 20, and now you're at 20, and then the ice cream start, truck stops, and then you slow down. So now it says you slow down, and what, hmm, what's the final velocity? Well, if you stop, that means your final velocity is zero meters per second. Okay? So you went from 20 down to zero in six seconds. So let's look at the math for this. The average acceleration equals VF minus VI. Yes, write the equation down every single time. Otherwise, you will make a mistake. promise you. Okay, now we start subbing in. The final velocity was zero meters per second. The initial velocity, which we subtract, is 20 meters per second. And you divide that by the time, which we found was six seconds. This looks a little odd. Zero minus 20, what's that? Don't say 20, it's negative 20. So we know that we have negative 20 meters per second and we divide that by six seconds. Yes, it's going to be negative. It's because you're slowing down. It's a negative acceleration. If you're slowing down, it's going to be negative. Don't let that bug you out. So here we go. What's 20, negative 20 divided by six? Well, negative 20 divided by six is negative 3.33. Okay, that was this part. That was the part with the numbers. Now the part with the units. Meters per second per second is the same as meters per second squared. There's your answer. Show it off. And there you go. That should be everything that you need to know about how to calculate acceleration. If you have any questions, ask me in class.